Hey guys, welcome to College Sportscast. Got with me John Hammonds tonight. We're going to be doing this, the two of us. Um, we're going to be bringing to you our college game day pick em for the week, uh, starting tonight through the 22nd or next week. And that's the games that we're going to talk about. And we've got a full schedule of games. There's a whole bunch of uh, college football bowl games to talk about between now yeah. and next Thursday. We got 13 of them, John. That's quite a bit to start that's out. Quite a, yeah, that's, quite, that's quite a bit of games, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to kind of swing through those, try to do kind of a rapid fire pick on these a little bit. I mean, we'll talk a little, but uh, we can't talk about those and get to the basketball games and do a few things that we want. There's a lot of big basketball games we want to talk about. Yeah. This this weekend, in my opinion, is probably the best slate it's been all season long in terms of – We had a pretty good slate. I think maybe last Saturday it was, but this yeah. Saturday is really, really good. Um, well, if you're looking at from the top 25 perspective, teams playing each other is what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Like yeah. Last well, week they had a, there's a few unranked teams played some top 25 guys. Right. So. All right, so we're going to start out with the college football bowl games. The first game starts tomorrow morning, actually, on a Friday morning. I think it starts like at 1130. It's the Bahamas Bowl. And we have Miami of Ohio that's six and six versus UAB, who is six and six. And UAB is a ten and a half point favorite in this game. And again, it's in the Bahamas. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Bahamas, mm-hmm. right? You get a you get a good vacation and you get a bowl game. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, win, come win. on. So who who do you who are you going to like in this game? I mean, I think I, I'm going to take um, John Roberts and the UAB Fighting Blazers. I'm going to pull for John Roberts' team tomorrow. I just uh, yeah, you know, Birmingham Campbell UAB had a rough year. Yeah, UAB just hired. Trent Dilfer as their head coach. They had this year been operating with uh, um, a uh, interim coach, uh, and they just hired their coach. So that's that's a good deal uh, to hire Trent Diffel Trent Dilfer for the UAB. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk. Apparently, I had to get you. Yeah. Apparently, I just I think. Can't... Well, if you look at. Look at it. UAB ain't really had a good year either, but mine of Ohio ain't had much of a year either. As well, well, I mean, so, UAB's yeah. got one of the better running backs in the country. I, he may he may have ended up being the top in yardage. I'm not sure. McBride? McBride, Deuce McBride. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't he coming back next year? I believe so. If If, if I read that right. Um, so they're ten and a half point favorite in this game. I'm going to take them in the Bahamas Bowl. I just kind of wanted to get it started out with the very first bowl game. We're going to kind of go down the list. The next one is the Duluth Trading Care Bowl. This one has two eleven and two win teams in it. Um, you have UTSA versus Troy in this game, and I tell you, man, this Troy team something else. Um, you know, John Sumrall has really brought them from the depths of despair. You know, they had a few good years there, but, you know, he really has turned this program around recruiting, um, adding things into the facilities. He's just doing a wonderful job there. And, he, you know, he's a Kentucky prodigy too. So that, you know, and, and even was it before he went to Kentucky, he was at Ole Miss. Um, so – He's been around the block. He knows recruiting. He knows how to. He knows how to handle things as a coach. Hey, Diego, what's up, man? Lost, glad in, San, lost in San Diego, Diego. <laughs> yeah, glad we're glad you're on with us, man. So, John, the, the spread in this game is actually UTSA is favored by one as of this afternoon. Know. I don't agree with that, but that's just me. I, you know, so UTSA is a really good team, but at the same time, they're going to be going up a level, you know, and playing Troy. 
here's my thing about these bowl games, especially about UTSA and Troy. I feel like they should both be playing power five schools. That's just my opinion. They shouldn't be playing each other. They should be playing somebody like Ole Miss. Um, right. Maybe a I team I like agree with that. UCF, somebody, somebody that's been there before. I just don't think putting these two 11 and two teams in that kind of bowl, I mean, they deserve a bigger bowl in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they're the two – they're the second and third ranked non-Power 5 teams in the country, UTSA and Troy is. Um, and talk and just to give you a little info about Troy, Troy has the eighth ranked defense in the country. They only averaged giving up 17 and a half points a game, and that's good for ninth in the country. And if I'm not mistaken, they got one of the better linebackers in the country. They do. Um, John Summerall was a linebacker coach as well. So, yeah, I you mean, know. his imprint's on that program. So, right. He knows how to run things. So I'm go- I'm gonna pick Troy. Who are you picking? I got Troy. All right. I think so, this would be a I think this would be a close game though. Like I said, the fa- the odds right now have UTSA as a one point favorite. Um, John Roberts is at like a Christmas recital tonight with his little girl, so he wanted me to kind of throw in his picks too. He had sent to me. Um, he is picking UAB and Troy, which is no big surprise. He's he lives in Birmingham and and Troy's not too far away either. So you got UAB and Troy in these two first games. So I want to kind of throw those games in. Uh, next we're going to the Fenway Bowl. This is the uh this is the Satterfield. I, I, I want to say something about this. <laughs> this is the Satterfield Bowl, is what this was is. Uh, Here's we got Cincinnati nine and three versus Louisville, who's seven and five. And here's where I'm totally shocked. I had to look at look at this three times today to make sure they have Louisville as a two point favorite. They do, and and another thing in this, you know, Satterfield what is, leaves. What's up with that? I think a lot of that is to do with Cincinnati has a lot of guys that was opting out, and their coach left. Yeah. I mean, like, well, even even on the other side, Louisville's coach. He left Louisville, and now he's coaching Cincinnati. Right. And Louisville, mean? Louisville is down. He took five coaches with him to Cincinnati. Louisville has a, a director of player personnel as their interim head coach and three assistant coaches, one an offensive line coach, one a defensive line coach, and one an outside linebackers coach. The, uh, and that's the all Brad. they have. Deion Branch is the one I think is going to be coaching them. Yeah, he's the he's um, the director of player. Former, former New England Patriot, great. Yeah. And see, here's my thing about this, how crazy this is. They're going to be on the same side of the stadium, the fans. That's <laughs> what makes this even more interesting is you're putting the whole fan base on one side where the coach left to go to the other team. I agree with you, man. How that's going to shake out, but whatever. So I don't know. It's 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 the Satterfield Bowl. That's what I'm calling. I want to take Cincinnati, but I want to take Louisville too. Which Malik Cunningham? He's not going to be playing. Um, Louisville's got a lot of transfers that are leaving, so I don't. Both of these teams do. It's kind of one of these games. I mean, who knows, really? It's kind of like the Iowa Kentucky game where there's a lot both, of people. Well, both out. of these schools, their coaches left. Their 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 coaches coaches has been shattered. Their players are transferring left and right. I mean, you have no idea who's going to play. This is a real, really, and truthfully, it's a hard game to pick. It is, but I'm going to take Cincinnati in this one. I just think they're the better team. Um, I think they got a better offense, and I even think they got a better defense. Oh, no, I wouldn't say – I think Louisville's a better front four. Cincinnati's right. probably got a better secondary. So well, Louisville had been playing a lot better under Satterfield, but then surprisingly he up and leaves and goes to Cincinnati when, well, Fickle, when Fickle left. What so, makes it so bad 
is you left right in the middle of the time where they was getting ready to announce the bowls. Yeah. Now, if this this would have been after the bowl, I could understand. But you're basically leaving a school to go to the other team that you're playing against. That's going to leave some bad blood between, you know, Cincinnati and Louisville. Cincinnati well, Louisville. and Cincinnati and Louisville in it's a already long time bad blood. Ago. In basketball, they was really right. in long, a long time ago. They were in the same conference together, and for many many years, and it was a pretty heated rivalry then too. It was. Um, I, you know, I'm going to go. I, I honestly, I was kind of surprised that Louisville was a favorite. I know they're the ACC school and Cincinnati's the AAC school. Um, gosh, I, I think I'm going to go Cincinnati. Um, and John Roberts also is going Cincinnati in this game. So, so far, we're all just matching right up. Matching right up, yeah. <laughs> All right, the next bowl uh, tomorrow is the Las Vegas Bowl. Now, I think this is one of the most intriguing bowls of the weekend. Yeah, it is. This is Florida 6-6 six and six versus Oregon State, who went 9-3 and three in the Pac-12. This is a really good Oregon State team, but here's my thing about this. Florida. Oregon State is favored by 10. Florida is down to a third-string quarterback. Transfer. I guess, I guess Richardson's not playing. Uh, he opted out. He, they're down okay. to a transfer from Ohio State, I believe. And Shorter's not going to be there. Um, there's a couple guys on the defensive side who are not going to be there. Um, I think maybe one of their running backs is in the transfer portal. So this is another game that. There's so many opt-outs between all these schools and teams. It's just hard to pick these games, man, because you don't are. know who's going to come out and play, which you nope. get – and what you do, like we was talking about it before the show started, it gives all these young players a chance to, to show themselves on the national spotlight, give them an opportunity to play, give them some t- some more reps, some more time to, to get a chance to play and more bowl preparation time. So – but if I had to really pick this game, I think I'm going to go Oregon State. Um, I just think Oregon State is a better – just a better team. Florida's defense is not real good. Um, they haven't been good all year long. They gave up a lot of yardage. Um, if we're if we're really being honest about it, to me, I feel like Florida's the only good game they played was against Tennessee. And – you know, I mean, they had a few games. They had the first half against Florida State that was good, but overall, Florida just wasn't just wasn't the team, you know, that we expected, and which we wouldn't want to expect it because it was Billy Napier's first year. But I expected better than what they gave this year, especially. Keep the ice storm away so I can join. Oregon State for the win, says Mason Cross. <laughs> Oregon State for the win, huh? All right, so, you know, to me, this is a game when you look at it is, you know, you've got you've got a bottom bowl team from the SEC, which is what Florida is, yeah. versus a 9-3 and three Oregon State team who challenged at least in the Pac-12, you know, for the top three, four positions. Um, in the Pac-12 and and had a great year, went nine and three. Um, yeah, you know, so it's an interesting bowl on that terms, just to see how the how this pans out because you know is the lower SEC team going to be able to play with the kind of higher Pac-12 team, basically. Well, and two, if you look at it from another perspective, you know, Florida is an SEC school, so. You know the talent level is going to be a lot be- bigger, especially in a game like this. But that don't necessarily mean anything, especially in a one-game situation. Oh, we've, yeah. seen it too, we've seen it too many times in these big bowl games. Teams have the overall talent, but heart and determination won out. Yeah, you know I'm I'm going to pick Oregon State in this game. Um, I. But there is a part of me that says that the SEC schools, even their backups, are going to 
probably be as talented. Yeah. You know, um, so – but you got to be good to play in the SEC. I'm going to be honest with you. Florida was already not quite up to par mm-hmm. in their second unit. And if they're losing a bunch of people – and, ha- and then, you know, having to even add more to it, I think Oregon State's going to have the better of it uh, in this game. That's And uh, John Roberts picks Oregon State as well in this game. Um, and we had Mason on, and Mason said he's picking um, Oregon State in this game as well. So then the next bowl we're going to is the – and this one – it actually has Jimmy Kimmel's name in it. It's the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. <laughs> I swear. You know, uh, all these bowls names, man. I next thing you know, we're going to have It actually has Jimmy Kimmel's name in it. It's Lucky Washington Charms State, Washington State, seven and five versus Fresno State, who is nine and four, and Fresno State is a three and a half point favorite. I don't really know a bunch about neither one of these teams. So I'm going to be the analyst that don't don't really know a lot, and I'm just going to pick a team. I'm going to go with the Wazoo. I'm going to, Wazoo. Pick, I'm going to pick Washington State. Okay. And that's fair. I mean, I know a little bit about Washington State. I don't know hardly anything about Fresno State, Fresno in this game. I do know David Carr played there, so that was a – I mean, they, they went nine and four, and they're favored over Washington State in this game by three and a half points. So, you know, they must be a pretty decent team, and I really don't know anything about them myself. So, um, you know, if you're going to go Washington, I, I'll go Fresno State and uh, since they're favored anyway, and you're going that way, and it looks like that – John Roberts is going Fresno in this game as well. So um, I'll take the different one um, and go Fresno. So we'll uh, at least have one or two games here where we're different. The next one is the Lending Tree Bowl. These these games are all being played on Saturday um, that we're talking about now. The, the Lending, Lending Tree, Tree Bowl, I mean, it's just keeps going, and getting wilder. The Lending Tree Bowl. It's Rice, whose record is five and seven, by the way, versus Southern Miss, who is six and six. And Southern Miss is favored by six and a half. Like I said, this is another game that I don't know really much about. I know Rice, you know. They play a they, bunch of Texas schools most of the time. They do most of the time, you know. And, yeah. And Southern Miss played Kentucky, what, a couple of years back? Um, a home and home. So yeah, yeah. I know Southern, a little bit, of it. I know a little yeah. bit about it from that perspective. But I'm just Southern going to go Miss with, usually uh, has a pretty decent football program. Right now. Um, I'm just going to go with the, with the favorite, Southern Miss. Um, I think they'll cover in this game. I got to go Southern Miss. My favorite player of all time, Brett Favre, played there, so I'm going. I'm going Southern Miss. <laughs> that's that's the whole reason, guys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, John Roberts is also going Southern Miss. Um, so we're kind of lining up in in most of these tonight. But the next bowl we're going to talk about is the New Mexico Bowl, and it is SMU. Who went seven and five versus BYU? Who went seven and five? This bowl has a couple of teams that it's kind of an interesting bowl, if you ask me. The two, the matchup. Yeah, BYU's been kind of inconsistent all year long. I mean, they had a great year last year. This year, the defense just wasn't quite there. And what's surprising is SMU's favored by four. I don't know. I thought that was surprising. I think I'm going to go the other way, and I'm going to pick BYU in this game. Um, SMU has had some head stretchers this year. You know, they 
what was it? They was close with TCU there for a little while. They were. And um, they have a decent team. They they, they played do. a few of these Texas schools and played them pretty close for most of the game. I mean, it's the home of Eric Dickerson. I mean, who the the pony. Pony Express. <laughs> Pony Express. You have no idea. You you asked a question on Twitter the other day. Who your favorite college football? Like growing up, who was your first favorite college football yeah. player? Mine was Eric Dickerson in the Pony Express. Yeah, I'm just te- I'm just saying that was, that was a pay for play. Hey, <laughs> Eric hey. Dickerson. I love to watch him run. They're doing, they're doing he it. Won, Eric. He don't. He don't. He didn't run like other running backs. He ran straight up. He and like this, and he would float, man. I mean, he just and he would knock you. He'd knock you sideways too. Oh my! And he, you know, he arched that back up and ran with that ball like this, and ran straight up, and he just ran way different you know, than anybody else for ever. A long ran. time, some of his records in the NFL, I didn't think a lot of people was going to break them at one point. He was. There's quite, quite a bit of. Yes, he had them all just about at one time. Yeah. Then they came a guy by the name of Emmett Smith, <laughs> and he done some damage. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> Go Cowboys! I had Anyways, to that one <laughs> I, had, I had since we're talking about SMU, and you had asked the question about your favorite uh, player growing up. Who was your first favorite player that you remember in college football? Mine was probably Eric Dickerson. I, I guess mine would be Emmett Smith. I, I grew up on Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and the Irvin, Irvin days. Yeah. Those were, those were some fun times right there. That's when Cowboys was actually um, relevant. <laughs> well, I mean, they were the best team in football for three or four years. They should have won it four years in a row if we're really going to be technical about it, but that's another All right, so you, are you right? taking BYU in this game? Yeah, I'm taking BYU. Well, BYU's got the quarterback, and they got a great tight end. Now, I don't know – I, I don't know. Here's the thing about a lot of these bowl games and stuff. I don't know who's opting out and who's not. I don't either. I don't you know even know who's. I don't there's, follow, so many, there's so many teams. I mean, yes, I've heard some people who are opting out. But, I, you know, it's hard to follow every single team and they're, you know. So I don't know who's opting out. But Well, that ain't, that ain't so much the bad thing. The worst part of it is is the transfer portal. You got guys in there that's been in there six, seven times, and fit, and some of them's been there since the Obama administration. Uh, I, <laughs> we'll, we'll get it. We'll get into that. I'm just being honest about it. It's yeah. Just, um, I guess I'm going to take BYU. I had been picking BYU in a lot of games all year long. I was right a little bit early on, and then they just kind of fell off and fell apart. Um, I'm going to take BYU, I think, in that game. Yeah, I am too. And let me pull up. John Roberts is taking SMU. So, I guess we're all different on that one. Yeah, he's taking SMU in that game. All right, and then the last game for Saturday is the Frisco Bowl, and it has North Texas seven and six versus Boise State, who went nine and four. And Boise State is a ten and a half point favorite. Yeah, give me Boise State in this game. It's and plus, I think it's at Boise State. I think I they get the, they might get to play on their own field if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. I really didn't look at it. Oh, the Frisco Bowl. I've never even heard of the Frisco Bowl. <laughs> I'm I serious. Believe, I believe if I'm not, it may be that one or the – might be Potato Bowl, something like that. There's one where – That's the, the next team, one we're going to talk about. The team gets to play on their home field. It might be a different bowl than the one I'm thinking about. Um, I'm going to take Boise State in this game. North Texas did play a pretty tough schedule. They played several Texas schools and a couple of games that uh, – um, I know that they played that was tough. And uh, so they are tested. I think mm-hmm. I think North Texas will probably play a pretty good game. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I'm going to take Boise State in this game. I am and, too. And John Roberts is also taking Boise. Well, and another thing with this North Texas game, didn't they just get rid of their coach? Yeah. 
Literal. Yeah. I mean, dude's done some outstanding work at North Texas, and and you can him before the bowl game, like. Yeah. That's uh, I don't know. Uh, and then the 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 next one, uh, no, I, I, Monday night is the Myrtle Beach Bowl. And it's Marshall eight and four versus UConn six and six. UConn is finally in a bowl game, man. And yep, we, UConn, we mentioned that early in the year that UConn that made a bowl. bowl game at six and six, and and Marshall is a ten point favorite in this game. I think I'm going to take Marshall in this game. Thank you for coming, UConn and playing, but I just think Marshall's a better team. Hey, um, oh, Moore Jr. has done a good job there in his first year. He really is. In his first year, he really is. He's going. He'll he'll turn that program around. It might not be on the levels that we want it to be, but it's going to be, it, it's going to be consistent with bow bow games. I think so. I that's think all he'll you, turn that's it around. All you can ask for. Yeah. You know, Marshall's had a good year. One huge game early in the year. Everybody probably knows Notre Dame. against Notre Dame. Um, they're eight and four. I'm going to stick with Marshall. They are a football school. I mean, the whole We Are Marshall is a real thing. Um, yeah, and if you've never watched that movie, you need to watch it. It's a good movie. Yeah, I mean, it's a real thing, seriously. So, I'm going to take Marshall. Mm-hmm. John Roberts has taken Marshall as well in that game. And then we're going to the Idaho Potato Bowl. I mean, it sounds to me like we're going to eat <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going. We're going for a feast. <laughs> it sounds like to me we're going to eat, and I, it and makes the more, me the more bowls that we get, the more the more it feels like we're going into Christmas. And I mean, are we going? Bowl. Are we going to Waffle House and order the potato bowl or what? Yeah, it's, I, that's what I'm wondering. Anyways, Eastern Michigan eight and four versus San Jose State, who is seven and four. This and, this might be one of your sneaky good games of the, of the yeah. And San Jose State is a three and a half point favorite. San Jose State's a pretty good football team. They've always seemed to have, even back in the early nineties when I was um, watching basketball, they always had a pretty decent team. But they've kind of lagged off over the years. But um, I think I'm just going to go with who I think do good in this game, and I'm going to pick Eastern Michigan. Okay. So, uh, you know, I don't really know too much about either team on this on this one. I'm just going to go San Jose State. They're yeah. favored in this game, so I'm going to go them. And John Roberts also is picking San Jose. So we'll at least be a little bit different between all of us. And then we've got the Boca Raton Bowl. That's Liberty, eight and four, versus Toledo, who is eight and five. I don't and, think, you know, Liberty's and, going to be without their coach, and I don't. Right, and and Toledo is actually favored by five points, but I think that's because Liberty lost their coach and probably lost some players and some coaches. Yeah, quite a bit of opt outs. Yeah. Well, they probably lost some assistant coaches and stuff too. That, yeah. that which Toledo, you know, if I'm not mistaken, no, that was Kent State lost their coach. Yeah, um, I was thinking of Kent State lost their coach. I thought maybe so. The- Toledo, surprisingly, Toledo's favored by five when Liberty, as of about two weeks before the season ended, was looking like they might end up being the first team in the non-power five conference. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Toledo, this matchup. All right, I'm going to have to take the Flames and be different. The Flames, the Flames. I mean, we got the na- a name called the Flames. I mean, come on, <laughs> the Liberty Flames, <laughs> the Liberty Flames, and that's who John Roberts is taking is the Flames. He's taking Liberty. Um, and then next Wednesday we have the New Orleans Bowl. And this one I'm kind of interested in. This is Western Kentucky University, who went eight and five, versus South Alabama, who went ten and two. Yeah, that'd be a really good game. Um, and South Alabama is a four and a half point favorite. Well, and Western just got their quarterback back, Austin Reed. So, 
I yeah. think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take Western in this game. I this ought to be a really good game. And Western's their offense and everything that they've been running with they can under move Helton, the ball now. With under Helton the last two or three year, three years or whatever he's mm-hmm. been there now. Um, they can they can put some points on the board and move the ball. And this South Alabama team is a good team. They went ten and two. They're mm-hmm. favored four and a half. I'm gonna have to pick my home hometown school here and pick WKU, um, Western Kentucky. I'm about 20 minutes from campus, so that's the reason why I say my hometown team. I, I live about 20 minutes from their campus. So, um, and then John Roberts has taken South Alabama, which he lives in South Alabama or Central Alabama, whatever. So. But yeah, not a big surprise that he would take South no. Alabama, right? Not at all. Yeah, and then the last bowl game next Thursday is the Armed, For- Armed Forces Bowl, and it is Baylor who only went six and six. Yeah, this was a versus this was a bad year for Baylor versus Air Force who went nine and three. Air Force is a really good team and. If I'm Baylor, I'd be careful with this game. Baylor's favored five and a half at six and six. I'm still going to take Baylor, but this is a game that I'd be careful about because Air Force runs that crazy offense that, that they run. It's it's kind of, it kind of puts you in mind of Navy and Army the way they run the way they run their sets. Right, and it's hard to to prepare for like. You don't know oh, yeah. who's getting. You don't know who's getting the ball. You don't. It's it's just difficult to prepare. And yeah. back when I was a kid, that was that was what offense was back in the day. The option, Nebraska yeah. did it, Air Force right. did it, uh, Navy did Notre, it. Notre Dame used Notre to run. Notre Dame it. used to run it. it. Yeah, it used to be a big thing back in the nineties. Yeah. I mean, the option can work if you got the athletes with it. It can. It can't. I just I'm not a I'm not a fan of it. That's just no, but it can work if you have the right of, athletes. There's a lot of blocking with it. Georgia yeah. Tech, that's another one that was with Yeah, Georgia it. Tech is always running. I don't know what they're gonna do with their new coach, but um You gotta get with the times is what I'm trying to say, you know. Yeah. Nowadays it's mostly what the spread and some teams run the pro offense, but we run the pro Kentucky run the pro offense, but um Right now, it's mostly spread, and there's a lot of teams do the RPO too, which I like the RPO if you know if you know how to do it. Right, you got to have a good quarterback for that. I think. Are you are you taking Baylor? Yeah, I'm taking. I'm still taking Baylor though. You know, I want to take Baylor, but they had such a terrible year that. I mean, do you do you realize I'm almost positive preseason they were top ten? Yeah, they was. It's they were top, top ten for their defense. This their defense this year was atrocious, and it wasn't like that last year. Um, you know, they were expected to be to probably win the Big Twelve preseason. Yeah. Um, and it it all come unglued. And I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that they're because of the year they had. They probably, and I don't know this, this is not, and I could be totally wrong. So if you're watching and you have a comment to say on this, you can, because I'm saying this in just my own opinion. I believe that they probably are, maybe have a few opt-outs and stuff after such a terrible season would be my guess. I don't really know that for sure, but I'm going to pick the Air Force. I think their offense is going to be awfully hard for them to prepare for. Um, and I think the Air Force has had a pretty good team this year. So, And it's the Armed Forces Bowl. <laughs> so the Air Force has to win, right? I mean, come on. They, they do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> John Roberts has taken Baylor. And that's going to wrap up the our first – week of of college football bowl games um, next week we'll do friday through thursday again and now kind of get into the nitty-gritty and kind of hit those games and then the following week we'll talk about all the big games all the 
um, New Year's Six Bowls and the college football playoffs. So that'll give us three more weeks of college football talk, which will be fun to do um, and do some pregame picks. But now we're going to turn the page and we're going to talk about some round ball. We're going to talk about some basketball. And uh, there's a whole bunch of really good games on Saturday. The first one starts out with Indiana is playing at Kansas. That's two big schools. Um, Indiana is ranked 14th, and Kansas is ranked 8th in the country. And Indiana don't play at Lawrence, Kansas very often. Mm -hmm. That's not a game you see very often. So if – you know, if you're a big college basketball fan, I check this game out. It should be a fun game to watch. It'll be a fun game. I, I think Kansas wins. I just – Indiana, I just don't think has – I wouldn't say talent. I just don't think they have the guards, what I should say, to handle Kansas's guards. Kansas that's, doesn't. Kansas that's doesn't Now that's Trace Davis, Trace Davis Jackson, might be one of the best players in the country right now. He might be. Uh, he's. I mean, he might be the best that's player on the floor, even versus Kansas. Yeah, it's. Well, I don't know. Grady Dick's pretty good for Kansas. I'm just saying he. It's possible he might be the best player on the floor. I'm not comparing him to Grady Dick. Grady Dick's his own player, but. Trace Davis Jackson is to me is on another level than these other guys are. But in a in a one game situation, that don't mean anything though. Right. I mean, we look at last year. Lawrence, Kentucky, Kansas will be crazy. Their yeah. fans. I mean, it'll be it'll be an absolute nightmare a- atmosphere for Indiana to go into. Um so you know, you got to take that into consideration as well. I don't know, you know, who you thinking about picking in this game, but I think I'm going to go Kansas at home. Yeah, if this I'm, was a if this was a neutral game, I probably I, I'd probably pick it differently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would at least think about picking Indiana, but I think it's going to be an awfully hard game to go into Lawrence, Kansas, and win. Yeah, I, I'm taking Kansas. All right. All right. So then the next game we'll talk about is Gonzaga. Versus Alabama, and this game is being actually played in Birmingham. Yeah, and right now, Alabama might be the best team in the country. They might next be. They're to, playing next like to, it. Next to UConn. They're playing like it. I mean, you know, UConn got, is the one team that beat them right now. So, yeah. They got they got a really good basketball player in uh, Brandon Miller. They got um, Quinterly. Um, they just lost, I think, their Burnett. They lost him for quite a while. They're good defensive man. Um, they got Sears. I mean, Brandon Miller was it was it a couple of weeks ago? He had an off night, and Alabama still won. That tells you how good they are. Well, um, but he had an he off night. Playing, it- but he still stepped up to the free throw line and knocked down six free throws as a freshman with the game me, on the line. To me, he's the best freshman in the country. That's just that's just my opinion. But everybody has one. So and the Zags have played a tremendous schedule so far for, they for them. Um, they to look down some- to look down and see that they are still playing teams like Alabama on this schedule. I, I can put some on the chin. Gonzaga's took some on chin early in the season. They have. I think they've lost three, but they've won. Yeah. They've won two or three of those games that they've been playing too. So, yeah. I mean, they beat Kentucky. Everybody seen that. Kentucky didn't look like they were even in the game. So uh, when you when you when you get behind ten to two, eight to two, start the game, it it puts I, a dent in things. Like I said, I don't think Kentucky was ever really in the game, but um, I got Alabama. Okay. You know, I want to pick the Zags. 
They're do um, they're do a really good game though. They I are. Think. They are do I feel like they are do a good game. And didn't Bama beat them last year? I believe so, yeah. I believe Bama went out there somewhere on a neutral court and beat them last year. I believe. So I'm thinking maybe Drew Timmy is gonna be looking for a little bit of revenge. I'm gonna pick the Zags in this game, I think. Mm-hmm. Um and I'll go back and look. John Roberts is picking Kansas in the first basketball game we talked about against Indiana, and he's also picking Bama uh, against the Zags. So uh, trying to keep up with what he's doing too, wanted to tell you guys all the stuff he's doing. The next game is probably the – as far as the rankings, it's the biggest game on the schedule on Saturday. Houston plays at Virginia. First team to 40 wins. <laughs> Houston. <laughs> Houston is five, number five, and Virginia is number two in the rankings. So it's a top five matchup. Yeah. Reason I say that both of them play really good defense. They do, uh, and it's they do. Listen, everybody, it's going to be ugly. There's going to be times where it's going to get you're going to maybe fall asleep trying to change the channel. But don't be surprised when you turn it on in the second half. And there's like eight minutes to go, and it's or ten minutes to go, and it's forty three to forty. Yeah, it's. I mean, if that wins your game, so be it. Boy, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all I'm saying. Don't be surprised. But if I had to pick a winner. I think I'm gonna go Virginia. I'm gonna tell you something. Playing in Charlottesville is very hard to play at. Like I don't. Everybody says, well, it's not the biggest stadium or biggest arena like Duke and all that, but it's an intimidating place. Duke's lost there. North Carolina's lost there. So it's it's not an easy place to play at. No, it's not. And and it being at home for Virginia. And Houston coming off a loss to Alabama, I think there's going to be a lot of extra motivation to, to win that one. It's going to be a tough game. It should be a fun game to watch as far as, um, you know, I think it'll be a close game. And so I think it'll be a fun game to watch as far as that. And gosh, I'm not going to go against Virginia at home. I think I'm going to take Cavaliers at home. I I just don't think – I mean, I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. I'm going to take Virginia at home. John Roberts is also taking Virginia at home. Um, And then the – Next game we're going to talk about on Saturday is North Carolina versus Ohio State. And this game is part of the uh, games being played in New York and New York at Madison Square Garden. So that's where this game is played. Here's a key stat. North Carolina is 119th in the country in field goal percentage. Wow. But here's another key stat. They're 31st in the country in total rebounds. Yeah, but so they're getting they're getting extra possessions, but they're not doing anything with it. Right. And this Ohio State team got lucky the other night against Rutgers because there was a call that was controversial where the guy stepped out of bounds. So but that has no bearing on this game. But I think, you know. North Carolina's not played well. Um, they're Ohio, not playing well, or they're going to play well? I said they haven't played well. They haven't been. And Ohio State, I think, is just a better team in this game. So, give me the Buckeyes. Okay. Um, you know, North Carolina started out preseason ranked number one. They lost four in a row. They haven't looked good. They haven't played well. Ohio State is, you know, played pretty decent. They're they're ranked 20th in the country. UNC's fell all the way outside of the top 25. I, they did last year. I know. I know. <laughs> I know, and that's what I know. At some point in time, I expect them to put it together because that's what Hubert David Hubert Davis did last year. Um. 
I'm going to take UNC in this game, and, and John Roberts has taken UNC as well. I just have a feeling that uh, they're going to get it together maybe in this game. So we'll see. Big John, he says. Dad. Dad's on the line tonight. Is that your dad? Yeah, he's acting crazy on that. All right. I was just trying to see who it was. All right, so the next game we're going to talk about is Davidson versus Purdue. And this game is being played at Indy. Um, and it's kind of interesting. Davidson, of course, uh, yeah, if anybody knows, Davidson's where – what's – I can't hear you. Oh, I guess he's leaving for a minute. I don't know what he said. Anyways – um, Davison's where Steph Curry played at, and they kind of have a tradition with him and the Curry family. So we are uh, – I'm, I'm including this game in. Purdue this week was moved up and ranked number one after Houston got beat. So Purdue is now the number one ranked team in the country. They are undefeated. It looks like John's having a, a mic issue or something. I'm back. All right. I was having the. I was talking home. about Davison and Purdue games at end. Uh, I think I'm going to take Purdue. Um, this is one of those games that you know. Davison's not a bad team. I mean, Davison's always known to, to be in always, the mix for an East tournament every year. Yeah. Um, that coach that they got, he's been there since uh, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> I mean, he's been there quite a while. Um, but I think I'm just going to take Purdue in this one. Um, Purdue's playing really good right now. Um, they probably got one of the better big men in the country. Um, this was supposed to be a rebuild year for Purdue, and Purdue has come out what? Not not even lost a game yet. They had their first scare what Saturday against Nebraska. No, they they they're number one in the they're number one in the country this week. Give me give me the boilermakers. All right, man. Um, I'm going to take Purdue too um, in this game. And so is John Roberts. Uh, and the next game is still in Indy. It's UConn at Butler. UConn is going to Butler to play. Um, and that game is on Saturday. UConn is the third-ranked team in the country. Butler is not ranked. I think they're like, I don't know, 7-3, 8-3, and three, eight and three, something eight and like that. Three, they're 8-3, and three, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think I'm going to take UConn in this game. UConn, to me, might be the best team in the country right now. If we're being if we're being honest, they could be. I mean, they, you know, I'm I'm going to take UConn as well. I do believe playing at Butler is a animal to is. play at the field house. Um, it is. They they have a – I mean, the crowd is like right down on the court. Hinkle Field. Yeah, they have a small – they have a small gymnasium. It's right down on the court. And they pack that place and they're, they're crazy. Um, wasn't, it, wasn't it a couple of years back Gonzaga went in there and they beat them on a last-second shot? Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm sure. telling you, it's a tough place to play. I, I would yeah. not be surprised if Butler – is right there at the end yeah. in this game. I'm going to pick UConn, though. John Roberts is picking UConn. Uh, um, and then a, a top ten matchup on Saturday uh, later in the day is number six, Tennessee, at number nine, Arizona. Arizona's been playing really, really good ball. They have. Um, so is Tennessee. I'm not saying Tennessee has two, but – It looks like – that their guard might not be able to play Saturday. Chrissa, 
Oh, really? Um, For Arizona? John Rothstein put out a post today that he might not be able to play Saturday. So that, that makes it kind of even now. Yeah. Um, it's him at there, Arizona. Yeah, with him in there, I think you give the edge to Arizona. Our, you know, Tennessee beat them last year in Knoxville, which Knoxville, as we know in the SEC, is a different animal on the road at, at night. Um, you know, so give me – I think I'm going to still take Arizona. Um, Lute Olsen – I call it Lou Olson Arena. I don't even know if that's – I think it's Lou Olson Court maybe. Um, that's that's a hard place to play. Um, it always is. Have, they, always and have. they've won a lot of ball games in that place. They have. And their fans are the most passionate I've ever seen in my life. So, give me the uh, – give me the Wildcats. All right. You're talking about their fans, huh? I'll never forget watching the 1997 national championship game. I'll go ahead and say I was in a bar in Florida, okay, in 1997. I was in a bar and I was in Florida, and it was right on the beach, and it was packed. I mean, the whole place was doing nothing but watching the game the night. They had big TVs up. It was one of the funnest environments wind up sucking because we got beat. Miles Simon and then beat us. But anyways, um, it was the Arizona fans in there and the Kentucky fans, we were like, we were going at it. It was fun. It was one of the funnest nights. It was fun. It was a good game. It was a it was a fun it was a fun atmosphere to watch that game in a bar in, in Florida. It was pretty fun. Well, if Kentucky had hit their free throws, they probably wouldn't be worrying about it right, about it right now. No, yeah. Well, I mean, we had every chance to win the game, and yeah. but you know, Arizona fans walked out happy. We all walked out sad. So <laughs> one team has to win, and one team has to be the loser. But anyway, you was talking about the Arizona fans. They are definitely passionate. I promise. Um, you know. It's hard for me to go against this Tennessee team. It really is. I, My biggest concern. I wasn't. Is- I wasn't sure. I mean, I really thought they would play better against Maryland last weekend. They didn't play good. No, and they didn't play real good against Maryland. But that well, doesn't. The biggest thing with Tennessee is their is their offense. They they go into stagnant. But then they go through a, they go through five or ten minutes where they look like they're throwing it in from anywhere. Their defense is what carries them, I think. And like I say all the time, you always tell you, defense travels in the tournament. Yeah. And it, it travels on the road, too. It, it just not – it don't disappear. Yeah, defense travels, that's for it sure. It travels, but you got to have some offense to score, too, though. I'm going to go Tennessee in this game, um, which probably surprises you. But <laughs> but I think I'm going to go Tennessee. And, and Everybody John has to Everybody has to make bad decisions every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and John Roberts is going Tennessee as well. So it's two against one, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And then on Saturday, the last big game that I'm going to bring up and talk about is UCLA versus Kentucky. And this game is also being played at Madison Square Garden in New York. So – you know, UCLA played Maryland, that same Maryland team that I just talked about with that Tennessee didn't look great against yeah, last but, night. And Maryland, do, Maryland, Maryland, does this. Points. Maryland does this, though. They'll look good one game, two, one or two games, and then they fall right off the map. Like, here's my thing about this Kentucky team. And I, I, I don't want to get everybody's um, – head rolls here in a minute, but they've got to play through Oscar. If they play through Oscar, I think they're a better team. But there's times where they get offensively challenged and they have no idea how to put up a shot. They don't know how to run sets. They don't know how to – they don't know how to get to the goal. They're – but – but if we're thinking about that for next there's year. No, there's no go-to guy 
that There's not a guy get, that you can count on late in the game. That can get that can break you down and get to the basket and score. Now Wheeler can get to the basket, but it's I mean, we miss we miss half of them. So, you know. The one guy, if I had to really put it in his hands, it would be Casey Wallace. I mean, because he's the last what, two or three games, he's he's proven that. He he hit the big shot against Michigan. Um you know, and I, I felt like he he played really well in that game. Um, the Yale game, I thought he played really good. I think we need to be playing Livingston some more and give him yeah, some confidence. That's a big thing, too. So, I think I Livingston could do it, could do it, if we give him the confidence. I want to pick UCLA. I mean, I really do because you don't know what which Kentucky teams will come out and play. Like, you just don't know. Um, you could have the Michigan team come out second half and start playing or play the team at Gonzaga where they don't even know where the game where the game's being played at. Like it's it's mind boggling. And it continues to get like that every single year. Now I'll say this for everybody watching. They shouldn't have that problem next year with guards. Because you know they're gonna get DJ Wagner, they're gonna get Justin Edwards, they're getting the D- uh, Reed Shepherd. Jeff Shepard's son, which I watched him play the other night. I think he's better than what people think. Um, you know, so they're going to have a really good team next year in terms of guard play. So, but I still going to take Kentucky this game. I think I think they're due for a really big win, and this would be a really big. They're win. definitely due a, get a big win. And I tell you why this would be a really big win because if I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, UCLA is number seven in the net. That would propel Kentucky up quite a bit if they win this game. So, I mean, give me the cats. My, my not, biggest thing. Not by much, though. Okay. My biggest thing, man, is it's offense. You're talking about running it through uh, Oscar and. I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that this team almost has to do that because they can't create offense on their own. They, you know, it's it's just they are so so far they are having a really hard time in half court offensive sets. Now, I'll say this. Now, if, this team, better. if this team can get it out and run and get it up and get some baskets that way, they're great. They're also good when they get the ball to the right place with Oscar. It's the rest that yeah, I'm just not holding. Here's my thing, though, is they start running and gunning, and they look like a different team. And then all of a they sudden – They are a different sudden, team. All of a sudden, they go into this hold the ball type thing. Like, and they'll hold the ball out on the perimeter for like two or three, two or three seconds. And I'm like, move. And you can hear Cal on the sidelines. He's saying, go, 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 go. Yeah. And they're just standing out there. I know. Somebody said the other day that's the only thing Cal hollers during the games is go. go! Go! <laughs> I seen that on Twitter, I think, or something. Yeah. Where somebody said, "That's if you go to a game, that's yeah. all you hear Cal holler." Go, go, go! Yeah, um, but I'm picking, but like I said, I'm picking Kentucky, but it ain't by much. Listen, I'm not gonna go against my cats. Okay, it's. Hard for me to go against them against anybody. There are certain teams that it would be really hard for me to pick against when it, when Kentucky's playing them. UCLA is one of them. Um, you know, for the longest time, it really and really still to this day, but it's not known as much. But for the longest time, I mean the. Well, even when John Wooden was there, the it was – The two best teams in the country were UCLA and Kentucky. 
And every year, everybody got tired of them being there every year. Everybody yeah. got tired of no, UCLA. There was a time that, you know, and that's – I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a long time ago, but I grew up just after that time. And uh, my dad grew up in that time, so kind of passed it on to me. But anyway, so I'm going to take the cats in this game. I'll say this. I'll say this real quick. If we get the UCLA team that played Maryland, Kentucky's going to have their hands full Saturday. Absolutely, they will. A hundred percent. I agree with that statement. A hundred percent. They better, they better ch- strap their their boots on because it's going to be a long afternoon. <laughs> yeah. John Roberts is picking Kentucky too, by the way, which is a miracle. I figured he'd go UCLA in this game. To be honest with you, didn't you think he would pick UCLA? I did. I I, I was kind of surprised that John Roberts is going Kentucky in this game. Um, so after the weekend on Sunday, well, on Sunday, Auburn plays at USC, not South Carolina. They, they're going out to LA and mm-hmm. playing USC. That ain't even the biggest game of the night on Sunday. Yeah, I know what, I, I know what, I know what you're going to say. So, and then so on Sunday, Rick Patino and his son is taking his Iona Gales, I think Gales, is, their, yeah. is their names, out to New Mexico. To the pit. To the pit to play Richard Patino's Lobos. That are 10 and up. And they have Jamal Mashburn Jr. Mashburn. On their team. So if there's still some cat fans on here, because we were just talking about the cats, they actually have Jamal Mashburn Jr. on their team. Uh, this is their second year. They are 10 and 0, and Patino and Rick Patino's team is undefeated as well. So mm-hmm. somebody somebody's gonna come out of there with a loss. And I believe I just interviewed Dan McKell a week or two ago. And I believe he told me that he didn't that that Richard had never beat his dad. So it's did you, hear, did you hear the interview with with him last night? Um, they interviewed him, I think, on the field of sixty eight, Richard Bettino, and they said, "How do you feel about this matchup?" And he said, "Even if I win, he's still going to have more wins than me, and he's going to do all this." So what the heck do I care if I lose this game? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Dan McHale told me he thinks it's pretty important. He thinks that Richard really wants to win this game at the pit. I, I think he does. Get one over on his dad, yeah. Yeah. I, I, so, when I did that What's interview, Dan, Dan McHale has worked for for Rick Patino, Richard Patino, and Kevin Willard, by the way, and What's he funny? had a little bit of insight. What's funny about this game is – the crowd might be the biggest New Mexico's had in quite a while because well, they're ten, they're ten and zero, a chance to get in the top twenty five. Yep, they haven't really had a good team in the last what few years. Um, that place would be jumping Sunday evening. So the pit, just so everybody knows, it actually is built down in the ground. Yeah, it's a, it's called. That's why they call it the pit. That's why it's called the pit. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, the tournaments used to be played there quite a bit. Yeah, it's actually built down in the ground, and the and the stands and stuff come up, and the court is down like in the ground, and it's called the pit, which is actually a pretty cool thing. And most people might not in, that lives out here in the East Coast might not realize this, but New Mexico Lobos are crazy about their basketball. They love their basketball. Do it's sort it's sort of like Kentucky basketball, and it kind of like not in that regard is better. It's the passionate thing about it. They are they're passionate about their basketball now. And then I'm going to throw a game in um, just to kind of reminisce a little bit. On Tuesday night, Georgetown plays UConn. Um, it's Georgetown's like got a losing record, and I'm not even bringing the game up because it's, it's a just- game. Big East thing, yeah. It's a Big East thing. It's just used to Georgetown and UConn was one of the biggest games of the season. 
to be honest with you. Um, John Thompson versus Jim Calhoun. It was I'm, I'm telling game. you, it was one of the biggest games of the season. And I, I just thought it was cool to bring it up. They play each other on Tuesday night. Duke and Wake Forest play. And Virginia and Miami play on Tuesday night. Um, and Miami has snuck into the top 25. They're like 9-1, and 10-1, and one, something like that. And they're, top, they're 25th in the country. Um, and, uh, of course, Virginia's number two. Of course, they'll be playing Houston on Saturday. But on Tuesday night, they play at Miami. Um, and then Wednesday night, Auburn plays at Washington. So they're going to USC, and then they're going up to Washington. Um, and playing two Pac-12 teams, Auburn is this week, away, both of them, USC and Washington. Washington the other night, Keon Brooks poured in 30. I don't know if you know that, but like either last night or night before last one, Keon Brooks poured in 30. He's doing well out there. Um, and I've been paying attention. I've been a Keon Brooks fan for a long time since he'd been since he came to UK. Um, and I'm kind of paying attention. He poured in 30 in a big win. Um, and Washington's, I don't know, they're like nine and three or eight and three or something like that. Um, and then TCU plays at Utah on Wednesday night. TCU is ranked. Utah is not ranked, but they're 10 and one and maybe one of their better teams since the Rick Majerus days. Well, so they, they also got a win over Arizona too. So, right, they're not ranked yet, though. A win there could possibly reach that point. Right. So that's kind of kind of wrap up the 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 men's basketball stuff. There's a couple of girls' games on Sunday. Notre Dame plays at Virginia Tech. Notre Dame's the fifth ranked team in the country, and Virginia Tech is the sixth ranked team in the country. Um, so it's fifth and sixth playing each other at Virginia Tech in Blacks in Blacksburg. It ought to be a uh, pretty rowdy atmosphere, I would think, for the girls' game to uh, uh, check that game out. And then on Sunday, and this game doesn't quite have the appeal because Tennessee has started out fairly bad. They have five losses. They're seven and five. They were ranked preseason top five. But they're going out to Stanford, who's the second-ranked team in the country on the girls' side of the ball. Um, they have a, a heck of a team. They are going to be one of the teams that has a chance to knock off the great South Carolina on the girls' side of the ball. It's, you know, what Don Staley's done, just won, he, won it last year, um, has Aaliyah Boston back. So, anyway, they're one of the better teams. But – Tennessee and Stanford, in the in the grand scheme of girls basketball, is a big big game. Um, yes. And then Florida State is playing at UConn. Florida State's ten and one. They have a backcourt, two girls, Latson and O'Brien, that's averaging almost forty two points a game between them. Together, yeah. Together, together, yeah. That's, that's averaging. Almost- um, and they're playing at UConn, and I bring this game up. UConn's lost two of their last three in the girls' side of the ball. That's what I'm talking about. And the girls' UConn is always it, it seems deep. Like the last times, but the reason why they're losing is they they they've got two players hurt. Yeah, um, and it'll be interesting to see if Florida state goes up there at UConn after they've had those two girls get hurt and, and can hang with them and beat them. If they can, then maybe this girl's teams, they got a girl that's out for between four to six weeks. Her last name is FUD and it's really hurt them. So it'll be interesting to see if, Florida State can go up there and win that game at UConn because that's not a place they lose. Mm-mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not a place they lose. Um, so those are just a few of the uh, uh, girls' games that I wanted to bring up. Um, Stanford plays Creighton a little bit later in the week, and then Creighton plays Arkansas, and Creighton is ranked on the girls' side of the ball as well. They have a good team, a couple of – 
games to watch for next week on the girls' side of the ball. Uh, but uh, um, that's, go ahead. Please want, please want to talk about the Christmas um, Christmas uh, lives and stuff. I don't think we're going to do one. Yeah, well, uh, just pay just pay attention to us on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, um, and, and we will. Uh, and we'll post something about when we're going to do shows. Next week is leading up to Christmas, and then the There's following week, and then the following week is right after Christmas and New Year's. So the next two weeks, we may have just a little bit of a different schedule. I'm well, going to. I'll probably won't um, be here Tuesday or Thursday because I've got a lot of family on my dad's side coming in. So coming in. Yeah, it'd probably it'd probably be just you and John Roberts probably next week. Okay, but I will be back for um, the collab with Coleman. I'll be there for that one. Yeah, we've got that going on. Um, trying to get a few well, things up here. Real everybody quick. wants to know about earlier what I posted about the NBA. Um. I don't want to give out too much information, but I can give out a little bit. Um, I made a I, – I got DM the guy today to see if he would like to come on the show. He played for Villanova um, back in the early 2000s. He played for, I think, Jay Wright. Um, so, can't really give out a name, but that's as far as I can go with it because of privacy stuff. But he's he's supposed to get back with me, hopefully, um, after the new year. So um, that will be a big interview because he played. He was a first team All American for Villanova. So, well, and and people got to understand that it's the holiday season. So oh, you do. And we've got some, of- we've got some things going on, but we um, you know probably going to have to wait to after the holiday. To do well, some that's so game. much it, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, when you try to contact these people, a lot of them don't want you to really give their names out because there's a lot of privacy stuff that goes around. And until they actually get the interview, you hey, want to sure, You know what I mean? So you want to make sure you get the interview down before you um, get everybody in a frenzy, you know? Right. So Greg says, hey, hey guys. In laws and towns, so gotta go. But wanted to say hi. Wanted to say hi. We appreciate it, Greg. It ain't the Christmas lampoons in laws, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole fam family. Oh, <laughs> you know, let's just do a quick little thing there about the that movie. We was watching it the other night as a family, and there was a part in there where he says, um, where it's towards the end of the movie, and and uncles, um, I can't think, aunt cousin Eddie. No, it was the aunt and uncle, the one, the older, the yeah. older, the older couple. And he light up that fire, and the fire went up in the sky, and she started singing the Star Spangled Banner. And uh, <laughs> I thought that was pretty neat. Like she just started, oh say can you see, and everybody just started joining <laughs> in like it was. It just reminded me of so many families. Their Christmases are, are off the wall sometimes, and you just gotta, you know, take 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 a lot of it with a grain of salt. Some of it. So, good people, he said. All right, guys. So we are uh, posting a few things while we kind of finish this up and talk. That's Reaper Apparel Company. You can get a ten percent discount with that C Sports Casting code there. If you follow that link that I got on there for you. It's been, it's been fun reading that. I think we should do this every night. Get rid of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, one last thing, uh, as far as just kind of some stuff we need to talk about. We're now being featured on the YouTube channel, the Real Fresh channel, on Sunday evenings. Yeah. Um, check us out on that channel. That This guy uh, has a network of podcasts that he puts on his channel. Like and I said, I NFL Outdated is another one that we're going to. Yes, be. NFL Outdated is one of the is one of the podcasts that is on there. He has, like I said, pro sports pods, comedy spot, uh, 
pods. Um, he has uh, fantasy football pods, um, murder mystery pod. We're on there as the college sports um, podcast. So check them out on the Real Fresh channel. And he is on Twitter as well at the Real Fresh channel. Speaking of which, I was watching it the other night. There was one wrestling show that lasted three and a half hours. How do you come up with stuff in three hours? <laughs> I told you they last. Some of them last forever. Well, man, um, you'd have to. There's some you just have to grind your teeth on, I guess. That's our Linktree page. Please go to Linktree and follow us. We ask that you follow us, and so you can uh, catch our lives and know when we're on. Um, we're trying to keep a kind of a regular schedule. Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays, but for the next couple of weeks, we probably will be off of that regular schedule just a little bit through the holidays. Yeah. But then That's, we will but then we will go back to our, our, our regular schedule. So um, just want to kind of give y'all a heads up January, on that. January and February will be bumping with college basketball. Oh yeah, yeah. And so, and so two more quick things, real quick. We are Planning on doing a collab show with NFL Outdated. And this is going to be a Iowa versus Kentucky Music City Bowl preview. If we get this done, I've got it almost worked out, everything. Um, but we're going to be doing that. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be on our channel on our end or if it's going to be on their channel and their end. Um, but we'll post it when we get it and, and you guys will see it. So um, we got that going on. And then we're going to do a collab post game show New Year's Eve with talk in Kentucky. And that is going to be a combined effort show, I believe. And it is going to be I'll probably be eating um, before the ball drops some some cheese ball and uh, well and that's going to be after the UK Louisville game basketball and yeah. after the Iowa Kentucky game in the Music City Bowl we'll do a kind of a collab effort with talking Kentucky so we're looking forward to that with Coleman Scott and Caden they're good friends of ours so um, it'll be fun to do that on New Year's Eve with them and. Uh, if you watch their show, Talking Kentucky, please do. I think they were on tonight, too, about the same time we were. So, anyways. Everybody uh, has schedules. Uh, usually, it, it depends. Everybody's on at a different time. And <laughs> yeah. So, we appreciate you guys being on with us. We appreciate all the comments. If you're watching, if you're on with us, if you're watching this as a recording, you know, after we do this, if you're on again with us, please chat with us. Give us a comment. Say something follow to us. us. Follow us on Twitter. We need we need more followers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we need, follow we us need on Twitter. Uh, we we have a Facebook on. page and Twitter page. That link tree, the reason why I have that up, it has all of our stuff. It has the Twitters. It has the Facebook. It has our YouTube. It has it, – there's even a Christmas giveaway for some hats right it now. It has Brad's social security number on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> Got dog credit cards on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just <laughs> don't jump on fat, okay? It doesn't have that. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. All right, man. We'll end this up. We will be here on Sunday this week for our week wrap up show. And then after that, we'll announce on Sunday exactly what we're going to do. Um, for for next week so we appreciate y'all being on y'all have a good night we'll catch you on sunday <laughs>